I still win. Unless... Nope. Ooh. He's... He didn't think to retreat. He can't fathom that a movement that could beat Shuri, it just it didn't compute. So he's like, yeah, I'll take the snap. No, don't take the snap. We crush him. Welcome back, my friends, to Marvel Snap. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you an insane movement list capable of climbing in the current climate. I didn't know if this would ever be the case, but this is hands down the best movement list that I have ever gotten my hands on. And it is budget friendly, budget friendly. It's using the newly dropped Absorbing Man into Series 3 to be able to be the multiplier that movement before had been missing. Now, movement was somewhat elevated when Freddy Babes showcased his movement package of the Iron Man, Iron Fist, uh, Vulture in his mid-range list. This is a dedicated movement list, something that you really don't see anything of on a ladder, but this list has the juice, and it has a couple tech cards to make it able to handle the modern matchups. Shuri, uh, Thanos, they're gonna be rough. But this list, the creator, uh, posted on Reddit, he took it all the way to infinite, climbing with it uh, from 80 to 100. He's had like three hours? The man's insane. Where do I think the competitive level of the list really lies? Pretty mid-tier. But that's insane because otherwise movement is not mentioned at all on any tier list. So this one is able to hang in there up against the, the, any of the matchups that you face. I absolutely adore it. Let's break down what we are looking at. We have effectively all of the movement package here except... We have dropped multiple man. We don't need to be clogging our board. We want to instead use the newly buffed carry of Dagger. We're using the Human Torch because uh, Killmongers are few and far between. And then we also, of course, have the Vulture being able to scale up quite nicely as well. And the Craven is a very underappreciated movement carry. Uh, he had a buff a long time ago where he's gaining plus two per card that moves to his location rather than just plus one. And he can, in the right circumstance, scale nearly as high as any of the other movement carries that we have. Then we have all of our movement activators, the Iron Fist, the Cloak, and the Doctor Strange. This is where Absorbing Man really shines because the movement carry cards, they're understated. You have to move them once to reach tempo, twice to really be able to make m money, be able to keep up with the opposing matchups. And when you can only use like Cloak and Doctor Strange one time, you end up just falling a little flat. It's when Absorbing Man can come in and be a reactivation of Cloak, a reactivation of Doctor Strange. When you have multiple movement pieces established, your buffs just get out of hand very quickly, especially with the Human Torch doubling and then whatnot, so on and so forth. You can create one of these carries that can solo win a location and then consolidate all your other forces to be able to win elsewhere. That is where Heimdall is our big finisher, but he's not our only finisher. We have effectively three paths to be able to close out the games. One is the Heimdall shuffle to the left, to the left. Uh, very predictable, very powerful if you have multiple movement engines already developed. Yeah, but a lot of people see it coming. It's not always the right case to play it in a given situation. So the Magneto comes in as just a tower card. If you're already happy with your board position or you're playing the mind game that you think the opponent is going to follow your Heimdall shuffle or try and block that, the Magneto can be able to shoot you up to victory. And in a pinch, if he is moving these three and four cost cards, that disrupts the opponent. And yet again, another synergy, if he's bringing them to the location with the Craven, the Craven will buff himself and that will somewhat offset the power gain the opponent is getting at that location by having their cards come in and help them out. Finally, the arrow. The, the arrow is just such a staple in the current meta. We can generate incredible early game tempo with a couple key movements. If we're ahead at two of the locations, you arrow on five, you absorbing man to copy the arrow on six, just lock them out, close the game from there, or just that final turn to be able to use the arrow to move things around. Again, synergy with the Craven, but you're not really trying to set that up. That's too much of a brain breaker even for me to be able to connect all the dots and think that far ahead. Final piece that we must mention is the storm. Movement can get really schlacked by the location draws. Storm is a location fixer. She's also a lockdown. 
she does a lot in this deck, guys. It's very easy for us to be able to get assistance to the stormed or the flooded location because of the Iron Fist, because of the Heimdall. But also, this is specifically up against the Shuri matchup. Shuri does nothing on turn four, usually. Usually does nothing on turn four. And so Storm particularly can attack that, lock down a location so that you are ahead with your early tempo, and then you can use the arrow to be able to close out whatever Shuri's game plan is from there. Let's dive in to our matches, see if we can get a good showcase going. Ooh, right, we are in. We are in Dagger, Storm, Absorbing Man, Heimdall. We're gonna talk about how the combos can come together in the mid game with the activations uh, as, as they come up. Monster Island, not good for us. It really is quite terrible because the, uh, the Doctor Strange will pull the monster instead of one of our engine pieces that we tried to develop. And with the newly buffed dagger, she slots in all oh, the Bifrost. You gonna laugh at me like that? All right, I'll go Vulture here to be able to capitalize. We can still make a lot of use off the Bifrost. Polaris, you're, ten you're treading dangerous waters, my friend. Okay, okay. After turn four, then I can. Let's piece it together. Movement is such an intellectual deck. It feels very intellectual with all the combo pieces that you can set up. Human Torch will be able to double. Vulture is going to slide over. I then want to be able, I have the Heimdall shuffle also. I will put Cloak on middle. That will stay with the, the movement allowance will stay with Monster Island, not with him. He will all move at the end of turn four. They will then return to Monster Island. The pieces that we want will then Heimdall shuffle after that. We could also reactivate a cloak ability with the Absorbing Man. We have a lot of flexibility from here on out. <laughs> Let's take it. Let's take it. Shuri. Ooh, running up against the meta. We do have a location dramatically helping us out here, but... That means Shuri is the tip of the spear. Can we handle her? We do not have Arrow. That, no, that effectively... We got a good location drop, we got a bad hand drop. Now if we see arrow then we're, we're gold. Move him along, move him along. I want to position human torch of course. And the dagger. And then absorbing man you back. Where do I want things to end up is the question. I will position the cloak down here as well, get him out of the way. That lets me move, especially Human Torch, backwards, and the dagger backwards, I think. For then the Heimdall shuffle to really pop off. I would snap, but I don't want to scare up away because I want to see how big we scale up. Still, I'm still myself feeling out when you snap with this deck and whatnot. Now the opponent was Shuri. Ooh, ooh, the wrench has been thrown. Craven, Storm, lock it down. Doesn't matter, it's too late in the game. Heimdall, shuffle me. Vulture moves, he buffs himself. Craven gets buffed additionally. Iron, <laughs> you're gonna spite me like that? Doctor Strange could have been incredible. Arrow could have been incredible. Oh, they didn't want it. Oh, look at this. That is a stat line. That is a stat line. If you guys enjoy this style of deck, guys, especially playing against the meta options, budget-friendly options, I got our list up above. Show some love to the video. Help support the channel here. It really does help boost our uh, awareness out into the community. Movement can still be alive. If you like the video, that helps us out a ton. Isle of Silence, I don't care. We just race. We do have the control against the opponent and the arrow, but that's it. That is all. I will Iron Fist Human Torch into a turn three Cloak, into a turn four Absorbing Man. On five, hopefully we develop another set of carries, and then we Heimdall. Okay, punch him. Invisible Woman. Not sure what that means. Invisible Woman is becoming adopted as a viable card in a lot more lists. Just because of what she can do with a Tuma Ebony Maw, but then... Also a lot of protection for uh, carry cards. Woof. We got the Heimdall, but we're in a horrendous position to be able to use him. 
It makes me very disappointed. I have to say, I will. I think I arrow first and then I cloak. I don't know where I'm necessarily putting arrow. <laughs> over here? Yeah. Cloak on mid? Sure. Then I can absorbing man over here. Move them again and then I'm all them back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a game plan. What are they going to play? It could be anything. It could actually be... Well, okay. That was a... <laughs> I wasn't necessarily thinking about it, but there's a good reason to play arrow to the side so you get to see what it is. Giganto, eh? Yeah, so it's some kind of... It could be Hella. It probably is Hella. Odds of it not being Hella are, are slim to none. I'll play Absorbing Man, copy the cloak, keep on bouncing the torch. Torch can pop off. The doubling effect to get so much better the more often he activates. He's already looking good at 8. Well, how about now at 16? How about after Heimdall? 32. With the vulture and dagger, are you kidding me? Do this. Do this. We got it, right? Human torch move? Okay. <laughs> Obviously. Human torch is up to 16. Heimdall shuffle is going to be able to scale vulture, scale dagger, scale the human torch. I move the cloak, looking far into the future, auguring ahead. I'm going to be playing Heimdall to Lemuria. Then using the Dagger Vulture carry to try and win that, and then the Human Torch is going to solo win mid. And that's all the uh, space that I have. I want the best cards I can have in this location, meaning... I should actually bring Iron Fist over with the Human Torch rather than the Cloak. It's two points better. Two points better as we look way into the future. Another one where I would be tempted to snap if I didn't want to uh, always be concerned about frightening my opponent off, but also <laughs> there's gonna be so much that controls us here. Jubilee Captain Marvel is definitely Hella. And then the Heimdall Shuffle. We do the Heimdall Shuffle to the left, to the left. I was about to snap there, but here it is, here it is. Ooh. 28. Points on Lemuria, 32 points on the Human Torch. Lady Sif plus Ella. What you got? What you got? Oh, 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 it feels good to be good, chat. A movement deck win. That might be one of the most satisfying feelings in, in Snap. Period. Period. Next to just beating Galactus. I put... Hmm. I put beating Galactus <sighs> Bar with no name. Okay, this is why we bring Storm because we, we really don't like Bar with no name. We could kind of play around with it here if I go Dagger. We'll see where this goes. I would put beating Galactus as even more satisfying than a, a movement deck win. A movement is never beating Galactus, by the way. Not a chance. Shadowland? I was like, is there a way to get the ninja over to bar with no name? Probably. Am I going to figure it out? Probably not. I can just Doctor Strange here and then like, um, Absorbing Man, the dagger back. We'll just scale the dagger to infinity. And then we'll let the sunspot kill him on bar with no name. Unless they're Thanos. Nope, they're Shuri. Yeah, Shuri doesn't run a location fixer, so we got this. Shuri also doesn't usually run control. They could run like an arrow to pull me to bar with no name, which would be a true tragedy, but... That's the only thing I see clipping us right now. Move me back. And then we have just Magneto to Atlantis, probably. Yeah. Well, what are we doing on turn five? I don't know. That up uh, Craven, and then be able to play the Magneto. Is this, what are you playing to bar with no name? On turn four, no less. Is it Shuri? Because you know you already lost it? It's Polaris. Mate. Don't, don't embarrass yourself. You made the dagger better. Ah, uh, well now I have to Heimdall, right? So we'll get the one power over here to slide to bar with no name. And we will get the... Raven Vulture. Yeah. I think that the location, I mean, the bar with no name can be very punishing to movement, but we got the answers. 
Got him. We're going to play Heimdall on far right. Arrow might have something to say about that, sure. We'll see what it is. Even if I... Yeah, Arrow might have something to say about it. Should I not have snapped? You can't live in fear forever on Arrow. Also, I'm infinite, so I'm a little sloppy. I'll admit that. They take, they accept, they play Cosmo. Hmm. Smart. That means that I can no longer Heimdall on, right? Yeah, well, I still win. Unless... Nope. Ooh. He's, he didn't think to retreat. He can't fathom that a movement deck could beat Shuri. It just it didn't compute. So he's like, yeah, I'll take the snap. No. Don't take the snap. We crush him. Human Torch, Raven, ah, Savage Land. Gumming up the works. I will Iron Fist. We'll see what we can make of this. We've uh, basically been recording straight through. Movement is feeling like a god. I feel incredible. Limbo. Okay. The deck... The deck gasses out a little bit. Versus other lists that with the turn 7 playing multiple 6 drops can really run. But we'll see what we can make of it. If we have our engine pieces... I mean, Human Torch is the way to go. Human Torch could be the answer. Getting an extra doubling if possible through turn... No... Oh. Central Park, this feels like it might just be uh, a retreat. You know, Storm fixes bad locations, but one with one locations with unreveal abilities. There's only so much that you can do. I'll put, develop Craven and cry. They play Polaris. <laughs> you hit them with a thumbs up on that one. You sure do. <laughs> he tilted off the earth. He probably could have still won. I'm gonna... I'll say that. We'll take it. Rickety Bridge. Alright, that could be a, a serious problem for us. Heimdall sending me to the Rickety Bridge. This is where we really want to see Storm. I will say that off of the experience of the previous game, uh, Arrow and Polaris, they are not good against this deck. This deck just gets fueled off of them. Zabu, all right, a little bit of a different look from the opponent. See if we're able to draw the... Oh, and then we got the... Come on, let's go. Oh, we got the storm. It's all coming together, baby. It's all coming together. I will... Play. Human Torch will double the four. It's a beautiful position because then I can Doctor Strange them both to Kunlun. On turn 3, on turn 4, I set up Storm on the rickety bridge. On turn 5, I play Vulture. Turn 6, Heimdall shuffles in. Ooh, it's all coming together. I would... I mean, the, what I just described is like a winning game plan without drawing new cards. What does Zabu do? Uh, Zabu does everything. It could stop us. Zabu normally runs a lot of control, which, unfortunately, this deck is pretty susceptible to the Shang-Chi knocking down our uh tower cards our carries buff me buff me well you get the buff from kunlun before he doubles himself it's insane black widow yeah i don't mind turn four as we said widow's bite storm thank goodness we had the winning game plan without needing to draw anything set me up he will not be able to respond because avengers compound is going to pull us on turn five to play across Ooh, he did go for it, though. Now we storm it. That's a bold move. Why were you playing the rickety bridge? What was this soul read? Already? It was gonna be so big. He died in the prime of his life. It's not a bot. They have a particle effect. Vulture. Okay. Things have gotten shaky. Very shaky. I'm only gonna be able to play the Heimdall. And I have to Heimdall, and then I lose the power of my Vulture. They don't have a lot of stats anywhere, but Doctor Strange and Cloak are just going to shuffle. They're not going to buff themselves. Like, it's not nearly as good as if we had, um... Obviously, if we had the Human Torch, then we'd be home free. That was the whole plan, but like I said, Shang-Chi can't shut us down. Maybe we got shut up here. 
maybe our uh, movement arrogance has finally met its check but I, I'm, I'm okay with the showing that we've had thus far what are you gonna drop on me make it big make it snappy arrow there yeah. now interesting that's actually less points than my vulture once my vulture moves only a single time arrow hey this it doesn't work I was thinking about it I'm like I'm a I'm ahead by four, I'm down by more. So. I can, I think I have to consolidate. I think they might have gotten us, really. And well, we, we snapped early. Before the Shang-Chi really put us into check. Which is fair, it was a good play by the opponent to, to play the Shang-Chi so early. And a little bit risky on his part as well, not knowing if I was going to have something to reposition. He was probably assuming that I didn't, because I think a lot of people have not seen the Absorbing Man on this deck. But now I'm just completely caught up in the past. This has to be it. It's not a lot. I'm going up by eight. What can you play? You've played the Korg. You can play the Hawk and beat me. I will still hope to see it. They split the love. Ten point hawk is just too much. The <laughs> Shang-Chi gave him the win, eh? So close, so close. Well played to the opponent. Well played. So here is the deck in all of its elusive moving glory. So much fun to be showcasing movement. I'm going to be playing this list a lot more. As you can see, I actually... This was the first deck that I ever got the foil backgrounds for all the cards. I've gotten some uh, some variants. And I've actually fallen behind on being able to keep them up to my appearance standards that we keep here on the channel. So I'm going to be playing a lot more of this one. If you guys give it a go, then I hope it earns you many cubes on the climb up to infinite. Until next time, thank you guys for watching. Keep on snapping.